Mr. Rahman was suffering from a heart ailment for many years and had been on medications. After a thorough evaluation, he was found to have idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy and needed a heart transplant immediately. Over this period, his condition deteriorated and was admitted to the hospital with heart failure. Doctor decided to go for left ventricle assist device (LVAD) implantation as a destination therapy. Team of doctors led by Dr. Mrinalendu Das, followed by Dr. Anup Khetan, Dr. Ayan Kar, and the Department of Cardiac Anesthesia, Critical Care, and Critical Care Nursing. Uh, very warm welcome to all our uh, viewers. So this is uh, an, another uh, episode of Living with Heart Failure. And uh, as you see today, we are uh, celebrating the uh, one-year anniversary of one of Eastern India's first HeartMate 3 uh, left ventricular assist device patient. And we have with us uh, Mr. Muzaffar Rehman. And uh, as you can see, he's been uh, uh, having had a HeartMate 3 implanted in him almost a year back. And uh, I will also introduce to uh, you, to the viewers, to the team that has been a part of this uh, extremely amazing journey. We have uh, Dr. Vinalindu Das. He is our senior consultant, uh, CDBS surgeon and head of cardiothoracic surgery. We have uh, senior consultant cardiology, Dr. Onup Khita. And you have myself, I am Dr. Kaur. I, uh, I lead the heart failure services in the hospital. And uh, so uh, I will start with uh, Mr. Muzaffar Rahman. So today, at one year from your surgery, how are you feeling, sir? Apni kama mona kochi na? Ato din pore je ek mona chole. Apni apni bolu na apna thiro kum chilo. Aage ki chile, aaj ke kama na chhe. Ami ek mona mane aage ami dos bachor ek mona ek mona kuch bhalo achi. Mane aage ami dos bachor aage jeta chila ek mona zero. Mane operation it. Chhuaat mas no mas pore the. तर आगे तो प्रॉब्लम हमारे तो बेटा वो परेशान है जो नशा भी दूर बोल लता वा मने सॉरी देर मने कोई स्टेन से कुनो तो चिलो ना कम चिलो वेट कम चिलो सो आमी तो डॉक्टर कहता है कि जो जो सर अपना आमदे मशीन का बॉस हमें रखे आपने तो यू वर फॉलोइंग आप बिफोर यू वर ट्रांसफर्ड टू द हार्ट टीम ऑफ द हॉस्पिटल so do you recall how was he and what what difficulties did you have with him as a patient i mean i'm sure you will recall very difficult days we had right. basically he had a very bad phase prior to this implant he had recurrent episodes of heart failure for which he used to get he admitted every time and it was a tough time for all of us to manage the patient but somehow uh, they can could manage him and then gradually the procedure was done so can you tell us why did you decide to shift, have him uh, transferred or referred to the heart team? So what, what was happening? So why did you think that he needed an escalation in heart failure services? Yeah, when uh, we got depleted with all our medical treatment, like we tried with all the conventional uh, guideline based treatment for heart failure, then we thought that we need to think it otherwise. Uh, we have to think beyond medicine. So maybe some therapy, either heart transplant or some any, any other device which might help him to come out of this crisis and then finally we uh, will so as, as you as you heard Dr. Ketan was taking us to the journey prior to the transplant and he had a very tough time so he was very emaciated could barely eat and he was not able to do his regular day to day job so as we call it in our term we call it very poor quality of life so that is something where, where all your options as far as guideline directed medical therapy becomes exhausted that is when you get upgraded for uh, escalated advanced heart failure services and as you can see that this device is it is something very new and it really works miracles so i will come to dr das sir and uh, so how your experience has been so you have seen this cancer band before and I, I think we followed him up for about three to four months before the operation yes and we've been following up for one year now and uh, I think, well, how has your experience been with him as a patient and how has your experience at the surgery probably a little later? Yeah, so Mr. Rahman came to my room and uh, when Dr. Kedan referred uh, him to me, so either of the options we had is a heart transplant or putting a ventricular assist device. So initially we always think about heart transplant but he was 68 years old and he was in such a uh, shape that we probably could have not waited for long uh, to get a heart for him because it's very uncertain. So that is why we op uh, we offered the other uh, possibilities uh, is a um, heart failure treatment is uh, the ventricular assist device we discussed at length. 
and then finally him and the relatives and the family agreed to uh, put in the printer analysis device. The uh, challenges which we had with him is that he was very frail and emaciated. So that was one of the uh, very difficult uh, thing to maintain his nutrition during and after surgery. Uh, so that was the biggest challenge but otherwise uh, uh, when he got admitted he even for the deteriorated as you know we had to put an interactive balloon pump to stabilize him and fix up a date uh, for his uh, LVAD and then of, of course it was a very big operation and, uh, and it was first time for all of us actually. Uh, but we had a good help from our doctor, Dr. Sandeep Atawar, who, who guided us and, we, and uh, we went through the journey. It was a tough time in the post-operative period, extubating him, getting him through the nutrients, uh, feeding and all those things. And then uh, we did not have much bleeding point, bleeding and all, which is another important complication. But we did have a lot of, and that was the COVID era. So Omicron wave was there, uh, all the close relatives, uh, staffs were getting infected and all. Through that also we could manage to get him out of uh, all these things. Uh, so it was a difficult journey, uh, but overall uh, with everybody's help we got through it. Uh, and, the, and, and also then subsequent follow up, he keeps on coming to us uh, every uh, two weeks or three weeks because the drive line is, was a major issue, whether he's developing a drive line infection or not. So we kept following him up and uh, we taught the uh, relative's daughter uh, how to do the dressing. They were very patient to learn about it and they did a good job. Uh, in between we had one episode of MRS infection actually, which we detected very early and treated properly. Now of course driveline is fine and he's doing well. So it was a difficult journey but we could do it because we got support from everybody. And uh, so we learned that because this HeartMed 3 itself is such a good uh, device uh, that uh, it did not create much complications. We have passed one year. Actually, if you see 80% survival one year with left ventricular assist device, you know. But we did not have any major event, mainly because this is heart beat three, like bleeding and stroke and other thing. We had home INR machine uh, which they bought, and uh, with that we could maintain the INR level also. So I, so I just sorry to interrupt you, sir. Mm -hmm. So before we decided to take him up for an option, so as you know, amongst the bad devices, we have two generational devices available uh, within the system, and that is the HeartMate 2 and the HeartMate 3 devices. So I will just ask you, sir, if you could just give us a broad overview as to what makes HeartMate 3 so different and so special compared to the HeartMate 2 device, and what exactly are its advantages compared to the uh, HeartMate 2? Well, uh, the, the most important thing is it's just an upgrade version of HeartMate 2. HeartMate 2 is bulkier version, uh, which we need a lot of pocket making over here to put the HeartMate 2. In that case, uh, dissection, bleeding incidences are high. And uh, the HeartMate 3 is an even smaller uh, device. It is intrapericardial. It is just attached to the apex of the heart. So we don't need to do much dissection. That, that is one part of it. The device wise, it is HeartMate 3 is a levitated device. So here, uh, the bearing, there is no bearing or friction there. So as a result, uh, very little chance for clot formation inside the device, which can produce stroke. So these are, and also HeartMate 3 has a uh, kind of give a pulsation every uh, few seconds. One pulsation comes in, so that gives a kind of pulsatile flow, which will uh, help us to uh, prevent uh, angiogenesis, which happens in the. Uh, stomach and later on gastrointestinal bleeding, which is one of the major complications of heart rate too. So these uh, few things uh, they have improved, particularly the size, the device, uh, the mechanism and the uh, related complications. So it is definitely much superior device. So I will sum that up for you. So so, so the heart rate 3 basically is based on a technology known as maglev, maglev technology, magnetic levitation which actually is used in trains that you would have seen. Some of the fastest trains in Germany use the magnetic levitation. Uh, technology. Now what, what it really means to the patient is that what or rather as far as patient benefits are concerned is the fact that you have lesser chances of hemolysis, lesser chances of requiring blood transfusion, lesser chances of stroke. So these are something that were major issues with the first generation that is the HeartMate 2 device and that exactly has been circumvented with the HeartMate 3. Now, uh, so, device problems Have you had any problems so far with the device? Problem is 
ডাম্বেল নিয়ে একটু পড়ি আর ওটাই মেন আর বাকি হাটি so as you can hear so what what makes this device extremely useful to a patient is that his almost his quality of life is significantly improved he is doing exercises which normal people also don't do so for kg dumbbell so doing biceps triceps he is working out well he is able to go around uh, on his bike he is able to walk to the market he is doing things which generally most normal people do so he is just like any other normal person except the fact that he has a machine which is driving his heart and and it is almost not perceivable to something by the way they bojha jay after a battery ni kichu bolben je ki bhabe manage korchen na korchen eta dutu battery diye chole eta battery ta ami to dekhechi ek tana chole 22 ghonta chole tar por o silent korte diyechi amar khetre du din hoyeche mane silent na tokhon bojha jay je ai bhule gechi mane battery ta change kora hoyni ta na hole ami ratri 10 ta mane sobar age मोबाइल घूरे जाओ तक So it is actually so important to emphasize that this machine is actually travel friendly too so you can actually travel both domestic as well as international of course with some precautions amra shadhanto patient der shikhe di kibhabe travel korte hoy kar shonge mane poste hoy kibhabe korte hoy it is generally safe even for magnetic uh, patients who have uh, mane through metal detector etc that you have in airports uh, so finally sir any parting words from dr ketan as well as dr das will start with dr ketan So, do you think this is the future of uh, dilated cardiomyopathy or end-stage heart failure? Do you think this is where where most patients should be rather than our transplant programs, given the fact that getting organs is extremely difficult? Yeah, exactly. As Dr. Das has stressed in the beginning also, only that like uh, as because we could not wait for this patient. So, in such circumstances, we should definitely think about this, and then uh, uh, we need to just. Uh, offer the medical treatment first then gradually we think about the other modalities of treatment in these cases but yeah definitely this should be. so right sir so your message was very correct it is to emphasize the fact that guideline diet and medical therapy is the cornerstone of heart failure but when that fails that is when you need to come and get in touch with us for advanced heart failure services that that involves cardiac transplant or a vad in his case vad was more appropriate because of his age and the fact that getting an organ at his age would have been difficult and he was not in a shape to wait for an organ and uh, so uh, so just a parting words as to how you feel uh, end stage heart failure should go about in the long run and your take on organ transplantation also and why in his age uh, i think this probably has been the best thing to do and why it is probably better than transplant in his case i mean uh, some thoughts about immunosuppression yeah well um, obviously heart transplant is always better than uh, left ventricular assist device because our first aim is to do heart transplant uh, but it is not possible in certain cases particularly cases where the patients are very sick and cannot wait second thing patients who are elderly where probably uh, if a heart comes it goes to the younger person rather than the elderly person and third thing of course uh, if if uh, he thinks that probably i want to avoid a lot of medications because heart transplant involves a major immunosuppression drug which has its own complications and all so these three reasons probably elvi we will choose it 
Uh, immunosuppression drugs, as you know, it costs, it has got implications like infections, uh, uh, late uh, malignancies, and all, all those complications are not there. Obviously, if somebody is well educated and can handle this battery chain and other things which he has described already, it's not very difficult because it can be taught and it can be done. In a, he, he stays actually quite remote in a village where they have organized uh, power stabilizers and other things. So it can be used actually. So these are the broad uh, criteria, but obviously heart transplant we always look forward to uh, do the first thing. So uh, sir, if you will allow, allow me to defer with you on just one point. So the yes, fact sir. is this that, uh, I mean, please do understand that cardiac transplant is the gold standard, but LVAD is a very evolving science. And the intention of the fact is this that in our part of the country, organ donations are very hard to come by. Yes. Right? So, in our last uh, one year between the group hospitals, we managed to do about 8 cardiac transplants. Uh, yes. Last yes. 4 years, I'm sorry, last 4 years we've done about 8 cardiac transplants. Uh, and it has been, it is generally not an easy job. And uh, at the end of this program, we must also tell you that this, this happened not because of the three doctors here, it's because of a huge team of doctors which has actually spent a considerable amount of time trying to get this patient back into the kind of shape that you see. So there are a lot of people who we are missing right out here, but there are cardiac anesthetists, there are imaging specialists, there are social workers, there are administrative people who put in a lot of thought and a lot of work in getting this patient back to where he is. And, and that's very important to know. So it is important that these patients need to come see specialists early on so that we can actually assess and tell you what exactly stage of heart failure you are in and whether you are really eligible for other therapies or not. Uh, we hope you have a, a very good... Also, uh, we must mention about the another important thing is the cost factor actually. Yes, uh, uh, the VADs are costly and uh, uh, much costlier than the heart transplant probably. So those who can afford probably and suitable can go for that. So there are pros and cons to both yeah, of them. That's so right. I think the, so a therapy is actually needs to be uh, tailored to a patient. It is not something, it's not one, one size fits all for all patients. So which is why you need to come to hospitals where there are big teams who are working and uh, it is in the best interest of patients that we tailor therapies to their needs. Uh, so wishing everybody a very happy new year and uh, hope everybody is staying very well. I think the same thing is there from Dr. Kitan as well as Dr. Das.